Hey you guys, this is Mr. Mellings and today we're going to learn how to do some electron configurations. So what are electron configurations? Well, in an earlier video we talked about atomic orbitals, right? And atomic orbitals represent where those electrons have the highest probability of being surrounding the nucleus of an atom in three-dimensional space. And so today we're going to build on this concept and we're going to talk about electron configurations. So what are electron configurations and how do they work? Well, it says right here that the electron configuration of an atom is the representation of the arrangement of electrons distributed among the orbital shells and subshells. Alright, so basically what an electron configuration does is it gives us the highest probability for where those electrons are going to be in the different energy levels and subshells and orbitals in an atom. For example, in a ground state atom specifically. For example, if we take a look at carbon right here, carbon has six electrons. So where do those six electrons have the highest probability of being at in the electron cloud. Well, if we take a look, this is the electron configuration of of, uh, of carbon right here, right? And if we take a look at an electron configuration, let's break this down. What do these little coefficients mean? The one here, the two here, and the two here? Well, this represents the ring or principal energy level, right? So for example, right outside the nucleus in the first little ring or, ener uh, or energy level, that's what this represents right here. This would be the second energy level or ring, and this would be the second energy level or ring also. And then if we take a look, what do these little exponents mean in, a, in an electron configuration? Well, this is the number of electrons that are in the individual little sublevel or orbital. So if we take a look at carbon, where do those six electrons have the highest probability of being? Well, take a look. The first two electrons are going to be in the S sublevel or orbital of the first energy level. The next two electrons are going to be in that S sublevel or orbital in the second energy level. And those final two electrons are going to be in the P sublevel or orbital in the second energy level. So if we take a look, here is our electron configuration for carbon. We've got all six electrons accounted for. Two plus two plus two is six electrons. And this is where they have the highest probability of being in an atom. Now we can also take a look at an electron configuration and determine how many valence electrons uh, the atom has. If we go to the outermost energy level that is the second energy level like we see right here there's two electrons in the s sublevel and there's two electrons in the p sublevel add those together and you're going to get four valence electrons okay so we can take a look at an electron configuration and extrapolate a lot of information about those electrons where they're at in three-dimensional space surrounding the nucleus where the uh, where those electrons are and the different energy levels and sublevels and we can also determine how many valence electrons there are for example we take a look at magnesium here the third energy level here is the highest energy level and there's going to be two electrons in there so magnesium has two valence electrons and here is our uh, electron configuration for magnesium 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 if we take a look at bromine here's the electron configuration for bromine right all those electrons are accounted for if we add up all these exponents here that will give us the total number of electrons in a bromine atom and if we take a look and go to the fourth energy level here there's two electrons in the s sublevel there's five electrons in the p sublevel for a total of seven valence electrons for bromine and in fact because it's in group 17 it does in fact have seven valence electrons so when we're writing electron configurations which is what we're going to do in this video it's important to take a look at our periodic table of elements and understand that the periodic table of elements is broken down into different blocks for example if we take a look at the alkali and alkaline earth metals that's going to be your s block groups 3 through 12 here are going to be your d block and if we take a look right here this is going to be our p block right here on the periodic table and if we take a look right here in the actinides and lanthanides this is going to be our f block so if you remember in an earlier video we said the s's can only hold two electrons and Coincidentally, check this out. There's only two boxes right here. The D's can all hold 10 electrons, right? And if we take a look, if you count these up, there's 10 little spaces <clears throat> in the D block. If we take a look in the P's, uh, P's can hold a maximum of six electrons. And coincidentally, there's six little spaces in the P block, in each row in the P block. And in the F block, we can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. And if you take a look closely you guess that there's 14 little spaces in each row in the f block all right so if you have this in front of you you should now be able to start writing electron configurations so 
what is going on with these atoms here? Well, every single atom on the periodic table of elements wants to look like a noble gas. It wants to have an electron configuration of a noble gas. And these atoms here are going to gain electrons or lose electrons or share electrons. So they have a, an electron configuration of a noble gas. So what's so special about the noble gases? Well, let's take a look. If we take a look at noble gases, all these atoms all these noble gases either have two valence electrons if you're helium they have two valence electrons if you're helium or they have eight valence electrons if you're any other I should put valence electrons they have eight valence electrons if you're any other noble gas so for example neon has eight valence electrons if you take a look closely so does argon so does krypton here, xenon here, and radon here. They all have eight valence electrons, and helium has two valence electrons. So typically, here's how it works. Hydrogen, lithium, and beryllium, they're typically going to lose two electrons when they react with other atoms on the periodic table. So that way, they have uh, an electron configuration that looks like helium. It only has two valence electrons, right? All other atoms on the periodic table of elements, they're going to want to have eight valence electrons, just like neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. And what they're going to do is they're going to uh, gain, lose, or share electrons in order to have an electron configuration that is similar to that of one of these four, I'm sorry, five uh, atoms or noble gases here. All right, so that's what's happening. That is why virtually every single chemical reaction takes place. It's because every single atom is trying to either satisfy what is called the duet rule or the octet rule, right? Atoms either want to have two valence electrons, specifically uh, lithium, hydrogen, and beryllium. They're typically going to want to have two valence electrons, and all other atoms are going to want to have eight, kind of like the noble gases here. All right, so that's what's going on. So now let's take a look at how we can start to draw or write the electron configurations for several different atoms. So when we're writing electron configurations for atoms, which we're going to do in a second here, it's important to understand this little diagonal rule right here. Now this is a rule and it applies and works uh, for about 90% of the atoms on the periodic table with the exception of a few of the heavier ones. But basically what this shows us is the, the filling order of the uh, different orbitals surrounding the nucleus and energy level of the uh, surrounding the nucleus of atoms. So it's a rule that shows the order that the principal energy levels and sublevels get filled with electrons. And it is very helpful when writing configurations of atoms and ions. For example, let's suppose we have a really big atom that has 72 electrons. Well, where are those first two electrons going to go? Where do they fill first? They don't start filling the 7s orbital. No, they start filling lower energy uh, levels first. And then they kind of work their way up. So if we take a look, here's how you read this little filling diagram right here. Uh, electrons are going to first fill the first energy level s orbital and uh, we can hold a maximum of two in here right so once they're done filling this they're going to then start filling the 2s orbital once they're done filling that which holds a maximum of two they're going to start filling the two p's which holds a maximum maximum of six then they're going to start filling the three s's the three p's then four s's the three d's the four p's the five s's then the four d's the five p's and the six s's then the 4Fs and 5Ds and 6Ps and 7Ss. So if you know how many electrons can fit in each of these little sublevels, then you can quite easily start to determine the electron configurations, okay? Because you know now that those electrons have to start filling this orbital here, and then they jump into this, start filling this orbital right here, then they start filling this one, etc., etc., etc. All right, so when we're working with these electron configurations, I always like to have a uh, this right here along with our little periodic table of elements that shows the different blocks uh, on the periodic table. All right, so I would have the electron filling order in front of you while you're working on the electron configurations and I would even have a periodic table of elements out. It doesn't have to be this one here but if you have a periodic table just simply make sure you write on your periodic table, take notes on your periodic table and make sure that you label that this is going to be the S block this right here is going to be the D block, the P block, and the F block. All right, so let's do some electron configurations and hopefully you get the hang of it. All right, so let's work some examples. What if we want to know the electron configuration of hydrogen? Well, if we take a look, hydrogen has one electron. It's number one on the periodic table. So where is that one little electron going to go? Well, if we take a look here, that little electron is going to start filling the 1s orbital, right? 
So it's going to start filling the 1s orbital, and there's only one little electron in hydrogen. So here is our electron configuration of hydrogen. It's 1s1. If we take a look at helium on your periodic table, it has two electrons, right? So where are those two electrons going to go? Well, they're going to fill the 1s orbital also. And the 1s orbital, the s orbital, can hold a maximum of two electrons. So those two electrons are going to go in the first energy level, a uh, sub-level, right? If we take a look at lithium, lithium has got three electrons, right? It has three electrons. So the first two electrons are going to fill the 1s orbital. They're going to fill the 1s orbital completely. And so now we have one little electron left over. And where is that one little electron going to go? Well, it's going to now start to fill the 2s orbital. So in the 2s orbital, there's going to be one little electron. So here is our electron configuration of lithium, 1s2, 2s1. If we take a look at carbon, carbon has got six electrons, right? So where are those first two electrons going to go? Well, if we take a look at the filling order, they're going to fill the 1s orbital. There's going to be two electrons in there since the s's hold a maximum of two. Where are the next two electrons going to go? Well, they're going to go in the 2s orbital, right? The next two electrons are going to go in the 2s orbital because s's can hold a maximum of two. And so now we have two last little electrons left over here. We have two here, two here for four. Uh, 6 minus 4 is 2 electrons. So where do those 2 electrons go? Where are those 2 electrons going to go? Well, they're going to go right here in the 2p orbital, right? That's the next orbital to be filled after the 2s, right? If we take a look, they fill this first, they fill this second, then they fill this, then they fill this, then they fill this, 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 and this, etc., etc. So we have in the 2p orbital, two electrons, we know the p's can hold a maximum of six. So you have to fill a little sublevel completely before you start moving on to higher energy levels and sublevels. Okay, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. If we take a look at aluminum, this is actually an aluminum ion. And what this 3 plus means is that this aluminum has lost three electrons. So normally, aluminum has 13 electrons, right? It's number 13 on the periodic table. But this 3 plus means that it lost three electrons. So 13 minus 3 is going to be 10 electrons, right? It's going to have 10 electrons here. So where are those first two little electrons going to go? Well, they're going to go in the 1s orbital. They're going to go in the 1s orbital. Where are the next two electrons going to go? They're going to go in the 2s orbital, 2s orbital. Right, that leaves us with six electrons left over. And where are those six electrons going to go? Well, they can all fit in the 2p orbital. Remember, p's hold a maximum of six electrons, right? So those final six electrons are going to go in the p orbital second energy level. And so our electron configuration of this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, right? 2p6. And if we take a look closely, this is, in fact, the very same electron configuration as as neon, right? It's going to have the same electron configuration as neon. If we ask, if I ask you to, to write the electron configuration of neon, neon has 10 electrons, and so it would look like this right here. So what ends up happening, like we just got done saying earlier, that aluminum is going to lose three electrons to become the aluminum ion, and in doing so, it is now going to have the same electron configuration of neon. Remember, all the atoms on the periodic table, they're going to lose, gain, or share electrons so that they have an electron configuration that is similar to that of a, of a noble gas. All right, let's take a look at this right here. This is the sulfide ion, right? What does the 2 minus mean? Well, normally, sulfur atom has 16 electrons, but the 2 minus means that it has gained and it has gained to a uh, uh, two electrons for a total of 18 electrons. So where are those two electrons going to go? Well, the first two are going to go in the 1s orbital. The next two are going to go in the 2s orbital. Right? The next six are going to go in the 2p orbital. The next two are going to go in the 3s orbital. And last but not least, we have six left over, and they're all going to start to occupy the 3p orbital. After you fill the 3s orbital, the 3p orbital is the next one to be to be filled. All right. So here's our electron configuration: 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And if we take a look closely at the third energy level, we can see that it has eight valence electrons. And in fact, this sulfide ion is going to have the exact same uh, electron configuration as argon, right? If we take a look, number 18 on the periodic table is argon. So if we take a look closely, what we'll see is that a sulfide ion is going to have the exact same electron configuration as argon, right? It's going to gain two electrons. Sulfur gains two electrons 
to uh, become a sulfide ion and it's going to have the exact same electron configuration as argon. All right, so if you use this when you're doing your electron configurations, you can now start to, to, uh, to, to, to write your electron configurations. And this will generally work for most of the atoms that you're going to be asked to write an electron configuration for. Now, there is a little breakdown to this rule once you start getting into heavier elements. Uh, for example, if we take a look, take a look at some of the heavier elements, the uh, electron configurations filling order kind of breaks down a little bit. For example, if you take a look at silver, if you draw or write the electron configuration of silver using the filling order, and diagonal rule we just talked about it's going to kind of break down so if we take a look here are some exceptions to the filling orders and just pay close attention to this I would pause this and just take a look all right so lastly what we can do is we can also write uh, noble gas notations or chem or shorthand electron configurations and that's what you're kind of seeing right here so let's take a look at that real quick all right so noble gas notation it says right here that the noble gases have the most stable electron configurations and every single atom on the periodic table is trying to have an electron configuration of a noble gas. So we can use this idea here to, to write noble gas notations. Sometimes when you're drawing these or writing these electron configurations they can get really long like we see right here with yttrium or uh, if we take a look at strontium it starts to get really long or if you're asked to, to write the electron configuration of the largest naturally occurring atom that being number 92 uranium it's going to have a huge electron configuration so what we can do is we can kind of do these noble gas notations it's a shorthand way of writing the electron configuration so here's how it works if we take a look at zinc here's our electron configuration for zinc but if you wanted to write it the short way here's how you would do it you would go to the noble gas that comes before zinc on the periodic table and that's going to be argon so we'll put argon in little brackets here and what this means is hey uh, the electron configuration of everything up to here this is the electron configuration of argon essentially and so we've placed that right here in brackets and then all we need to do is just write everything after 4s2 3d10 and we'll put that right here and so here is our noble gas notation for zinc if we take a look at sulfur the noble gas that comes before sulfur on the periodic table is neon so we're going to put neon in these little brackets here and if we take a look the electron configuration of neon is right here 1s2 2s2 2p6 we're not going to write that we're just going to put this in brackets neon we're saying hey the electron configuration of neon and then everything that comes after 3s2 3b4 if we take a look at strontium the noble gas that comes before strontium is krypton and the electron configuration for krypton is all of this stuff right here right so we'll put krypton in the brackets here and then we'll just write everything after 5s2 right and if we take a look right here finally if we take a look at yttrium uh, the noble gas that comes before yttrium is also krypton and so the noble gas i'm sorry the electron configuration for krypton is all this stuff right here we'll put krypton in brackets and just write 5s2 4d1 after all right so unless you're asked to do or write the noble gas notation you're going to want to do the long way electron configuration but if your instructor teacher or professor allows you to write the um, the shorthand or noble gas notation then that's how you're going to do it so if you like what you see go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel also feel free to leave any comments in the comments section down below or any questions you might have as well and uh, i hope this was helpful